The cancel culture, Sandra, now hitting Halloween, an elementary school in Seattle scrapping its annual pumpkin parade. They say it's about equity. Joining us now on this is Jason Rance. So, Jason, what school are we talking about and what are they doing? We're talking about Benjamin Franklin Day Elementary. They decided that they would cancel Halloween festivities because of concerns over equity and inclusivity. And specifically, they make the claim that their black male students do not celebrate Halloween, that black teens in general don't, and so they want to get rid of it. It seems like a silly excuse. I've never heard of that. I had to have some of the sort of awkward conversations with black friends of mine saying, wait, is this a thing and I just missed it? I'm saying, no, it seems to be that it's just performative virtue signaling. It's an equity team that made this decision. I was fully expecting them to come out and say, well, not everybody can afford the costumes. That's why we're doing it, which is a legitimate concern that could be mitigated. But for them to come out and just say, yeah, black boys don't celebrate Halloween is just absurd. I, I know that there I've, I've seen plenty of African-American boys and girls celebrating Halloween. Clearly, there are concerns when you have a Halloween parade or Halloween, for that matter, about cultural appropriation, racist stereotypes with with costumes. But if you address that with the students, why not let them have a parade? Yeah, exactly. Just actually address what this is about rather than make up something. I, it, what I find just patently absurd in all of this is in place of the Halloween parade that they're going to do, they, they will be offering what they call inclusive fall events like, and I'm not making this up, thematic units of study about the fall. So I'm assuming they're going to be confiscating the bite-sized butterfingers and giving them like leaves and saying, let's do a lesson on why they change color during this time. That's not what kids want. And the problem is these kids have friends at other schools who will be celebrating and they're going to be feeling all left out. So I guess equity now means making sure everyone is equally miserable and bored. You know, this is this is Seattle and Seattle has got a reputation for doing things like this. But uh, just after we ran the promo uh, promoting your segment coming up, somebody tweeted to me a, uh, a letter from the East Lansing Public Schools in East Lansing, Michigan, which we have confirmed that they canceled both the celebration of Halloween and Valentine's Day for the same reasons. Yeah, absolutely. I think we clearly see this move around the country. And these are schools that for a lot of folks, they don't think this kind of stuff is going to happen there. Like, I escaped these big cities with the liberal leaders. But no, those liberal folks, those progressive folks take over equity teams, they take over school boards, and they're making all of these decisions in large part, like it happened here in Seattle, without even consulting with the parents. The parents mm -hmm. apparently have no say. Well, at the same time, a lot of these schools lean into holiday celebrations, holidays yeah. that none of us have ever heard of and no one actually celebrates at the school, but they do it for the wokeness of it all. So here's what the principal, Stanley Jascott, from Benjamin Franklin Day, told Fox News. He said, several of our students historically opted for an alternate activity in the library while the pumpkin parade took place. This was an isolating situation, not consistent with our values of being an inclusive and safe place for all our students, especially students of color and those with a sensitivity to all the noise and excitement of the parade. But, but it's, an, it's another example, Jason, where if you can't satisfy everyone, then you take away from everyone. And this is a Halloween parade that we're yeah. talking about, but that's being applied in other areas as well, like advanced placement programs in high school, which really holds gifted students back. Absolutely, and I think that that's a very important point here. If you have, let's say, just 5% of a student population saying they're not comfortable with something or not willing to participate, well, guess what? That's okay. You don't have to participate. No one is forcing you into the pumpkin parade. No one is forcing you into the AP courses. We have to start looking at education, not just about a small group of people who will always be unhappy, usually because parents are telling them to be unhappy, or a presumption that they're going to be unhappy. You have to serve the majority of the students. It doesn't mean you completely dismiss any concerns that come up from a small group of students or parents. You address them. You mitigate them. But you are punishing the masses so that you can placate a group of folks who seem to never be excited or happy about anything. Yeah, one father of a seven-year-old Asian student said it was an exercise in affluent white vanity that is wokeism. Jason Rance, yep. I always appreciate you coming in. Good to see you. Thanks, John. Appreciate Andrew? it. John, Democrats calling in the big guns in a race analysts say could be a sign of things to come. But for all